My Lord is most merciful and compassionate. Part 2. What can God gain by your punishment if you are grateful and you believe? I have witnessed the most wonderful story in my life, which is about an American and a Japanese. I was so exhausted after a busy day. I had been informed that an American and a Japanese visitor were waiting for me. I doubted they were friends, but then I was surprised that they didn't know each other. They met each other in the center's waiting room, I invited them inside. Despite my exhaustion, I approved the visit. The American kept asking questions always, a question after another. The Japanese spoke English fluently, but he was just listening carefully and didn't interrupt us. However, the American didn't give up asking questions abnormally, which made me doubt that he wanted to attack Islam and didn't ask to benefit from the information. Throughout those three hours, he asked me a lot of questions. He requested that he wanted to learn and memorize chapter number one of the Quran, the opening, and he memorized it. Then, he asked to learn chapter number 112, Sincerity, and learn how to practice praying during his visit. That took him around three hours. Although I was exhausted, God provided me with patience. I understood that the American was an atheist and didn't have any religion from the questions he asked. Indeed, Christians don't attack God. One of the questions he asked was, why doesn't God admit the pretension that Jesus is his son? Does he feel jealous of Jesus? I replied, if you send me a package with the postman and I spread among the public that the postman was your son, would you accept that? He said, no. I said, is it because you feel jealous of him? He said, no, simply because he is not my son. I said, so you accept something for your creator what you don't accept to yourself. He asked, why does God punish with the hellfire? I told him, what do you expect from God to do with those who torture children with chemical weapons as an example, to let them go to paradise directly? I told him, also, someone who disowned his mother and father, humiliated them and kicked them out of the house to the street, as another example. How do you feel towards this man? He said, I feel great wrath. I said, if I told you I would let him in my house, feed him, praise him for this wrong deed, would you value my act? Would you accept it? I said, what do you expect from God to do with the one who denies the existence of his creator and disbelieves in him? Whoever is being punished in the hellfire seems to be put in the right position. It is a just judgment that hellfire is their final abiding place. It will be like placing a thing in its rightful element. They do not deserve the beauty and peacefulness of paradise as they disdain peace while on earth. And even if they were sent back, they would revert to what they were forbidden. They are liars. Quran 6.28 they're saying that they would believe if sent back is a lie. Instead the statement that they used to keep hidden, which was by Allah, we were not idolaters, has appeared to them when their limbs gave testimony against them. If they were supposedly sent back to the world, they would return to the disbelief and associating partners with Allah that they had been prohibited from. So they are lying in their promise that they will believe if they are sent back. Ulanam 28 This means that their sin is not limited in time, but it is an eternal merit. On the day when God will resurrect them all together, they will swear to him, as they swear to you, thinking that they are upon something. Indeed, they themselves are the liars. Quran 58, 18 Remember the day when Allah will resurrect them all for requital, not leaving any of them out. They will swear in front of Allah that they were not upon disbelief nor hypocrisy, rather they were only believers who acted in accordance to the pleasure of Allah. They will take oaths in front of him in the afterlife just as they would take oaths in front of you, O believers, in the world that they were believers. They will think that by taking these oaths in front of Allah they will be in a position to bring some benefit to themselves or prevent some harm falling upon themselves. Know well that indeed, they are true liars in their oaths in the world and in the afterlife. Al Mujadila, 18. So, they also face God with false swears on the day of judgment. But the ones who deny our verses and are arrogant toward them, those are the companions of the fire, they will abide therein eternally. Quran 7 36. As for the disbelievers, who reject Allah's signs and do not have faith in them, too proud to act in accordance with what their messengers bring to them, they are the companions of hell. Where they will live eternally. Al Aif, 36. Evil comes from envious and jealous people. It is fair that the hellfire will be their reward, which copes with their nature, evil. The attribute of justice that God has requires that he should be vengeful alongside his mercy. 
In Christianity, God is only love, and in Judaism he is rage. In Islam, he is just and merciful, and he has all ideal names, which are qualities of beauty and grace. I said furthermore, practically, in life, we use fire to isolate impurities from a purified substance like silver and gold. God the Almighty, the ideal, uses the hellfire to purify his servants from sins and evils, and finally, those who have one atom of belief are released from it, the hellfire, by mercy of God. He said, I want a tangible argument proving God's existence. I told him, you are asking for the weakest argument. We see the rainbow and the mirage, and we believe they exist, but they don't have any tangible existence. Moreover, we believe in the presence of the law of gravity without seeing it because science has proven it. The sights do not apprehend him, yet he apprehends the sights, and he is the all-attentive, the all-aware. Quran 6, 103 Vision cannot encompass him, but his vision covers and encompasses all things. He is the one who is subtle with his righteous servants and is aware of them. Ulanam, 103 Merely, thinking that you can grasp God's total perception is a symptom of ignorance about him. The car may guide you to the sea, but it doesn't let you go into it. For example, if I asked you how much the seawater is by litre and you answered with any number, you would be considered ignorant. If you responded by saying, I don't know, you would be all knowing. The only path to know God is his signs in the world and his verses in his book, the Quran, from the sayings of Dr. Muhammad Ratab Nabalsa. He asked, why do you not think that other gods give provisions and cure diseases? I replied, did anyone other than God claim to be the sustainer or the healer so that we would substantiate the validity or invalidity of their allegations? You can even notice that all people direct to only one truth and plead to only one God when facing trouble. Science proved that the entire universe consists of one matter and proved the same building system of the universe by studying the universal aspects and phenomena and the similarity and symmetry in the universe. For example, in families, when the father and mother argue over a life decision, they may lose their children and destroy their future. So, can you imagine what would happen if two or more gods are managing the universe? If there were in the heavens and earth gods besides God, Allah, they both would have been ruined. So exalted is God, Lord of the throne, above what they describe. Quran 21:22. If there were numerous gods in the heavens and the earth, they would have been ruined due to the gods disputing in the kingdom. But the reality is not like this. So Allah, Lord of the throne, is pure of the lie the idolaters describe him with, namely that he is partners. al Anbiya, 22. He asked, can that creator give life to a dead body here before my eyes? I replied, surprisingly, you atheists repeat the same questions as if you all previously agreed on them, though I believe you are sure they are irrational and illogical. I added, if God gives life to dead before your eyes, you won't be convinced, just like it happened in Moses' peace be upon his story. And like the other miracles of the other prophets they offered to their people. Their people were just accusing them that they were magicians. Likewise, no messenger came to those before them, but they said, a sorcerer or a madman. Did they recommend it to one another? In fact, they are rebellious people. Quran 51, 52-53 Like the denial of the people of Mecca, the previous nations denied. No messenger came to them from Allah except that they said regarding him, he is a magician or a madman. Did the predecessors amongst the disbelievers and the latter amongst them bequest one another to deny the messengers? No, but rather their transgression has united them on this. R. Dariat, 52-53 and even if we were to send down angels unto them, and if the dead were to speak unto them, and even if we were to assemble before them, face to face, all the things that can prove the truth, they would still not believe unless God so willed but of this most of them are entirely unaware. Quran 6, 111 If I had responded to them by bringing what they requested, by sending down the angels for them to see, and made the dead speak to them about the truth of what you brought, and gathered everything they asked for before their eyes, they still would not have believed in what you brought, unless Allah willed for them to be guided. However, most of them are ignorant of this and do not turn to Allah to grant them guidance. Olanum, 111 The American man added, How come the Creator may punish his servants with endless torture for a few sins they committed in a short lifespan? I told him, most crimes lead to a life in prison verdict. So, is there anyone who argues that the life in prison verdict is unfair because the criminal committed his her crime within few minutes? 
Is a 10-year sentence unjust because the criminal looted money for just one year? Hence, legal penalties aren't related to the period of crime commitment, instead, they are related to the magnitude and cruelty of the crime. Then he asked, why did God, Allah, repeat the warning about hell? Doesn't that indicate his mercilessness and hatred towards us? I told him, I exhaust my children by frequently alerting them that they must take care in their round trips whenever they travel or go to work. So, by doing that, do you consider me a harsh mother? This is making things look upside down. You are turning mercy into harshness. God's alertness and warning for his worshippers is out of his mercy towards them. He guided them towards the path of salvation and promised to exchange their evil deeds into good deeds when they seek forgiveness. He who believed and did the right will have his evil deeds expunged by God and admitted to gardens with rivers flowing by and abide there perpetually. This will be the great achievement of success. Quran 64 9 Remember, O Messenger, the day when Allah will gather you on the day of judgment to give you the recompense for your actions. That is the day when the loss of the disbelievers will become clear, as the believers will inherit the homes of the people of the fire in paradise. And the people of the fire will inherit the homes of the people of paradise in the fire. Those who have faith in Allah and do righteous deeds, Allah will remit their sins from them and enter them into gardens under the palaces and trees of which rivers flow. To live in them forever and never to come out, the bliss of which will not end. That which they attained is the great success which no other success can come close to. At Tagabun 9 Indeed, God is the merciful. The American man continued saying, Then, why did God order Abraham to slaughter his son, isn't that cruelty? I replied, Did God order you to do this? If we suppose that there is a person who claimed himself to be the smartest person in the whole world, he should be subjected to the hardest tests to prove his claim correct. Abraham peace be upon him was a prophet and messenger who received the revelation from God and he declared that his love to God was above his love to any other thing. So God tested him to prove the love that prophet Abraham claimed to have. Keep in mind that it was reported at the time of Abraham that the habit of offering people their sons as a sacrifice to God was common. So, God aimed to end that old habit and to replace it with offering animals as a sacrifice instead of sons. I told him, God guided all his servants to the path of salvation, and he emphasized that he disapproves the disbelief from his servants. God doesn't like the erratic behavior itself that humans may choose to adopt by his head disbelief and corruption on earth. If you disbelieve, indeed, God is free from need of you. And he does not approve for his servants' disbelief. And if you are grateful, he approves it for you, and no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another. Then to your Lord is your return, and he will inform you about what you used to do. Indeed, he is knowing of that within the breasts. Quran 39,7 O people, if you disbelieve in your Lord, then Allah is self-sufficient and in no need of your faith. Your disbelief does not harm him. The harm of your disbelief only returns back to you. And he is not pleased for his servants to disbelieve in him nor does he order them to disbelieve, because Allah does not order indecency and wrong. And if you thank Allah for his favors and believe in him, he will be pleased with your gratitude and reward you for it. And no soul will carry the sin of another soul, but every soul will be held back by its own deeds. Then to your Lord alone is your return on the day of judgment, then he will inform you of what you used to do in the world and reward you for your actions. He is knowing of what is in the hearts of his servants, nothing of what is in them is hidden from him. Az Zuma, 7 I added, what do you say about a father who repeatedly tells his sons I am proud of all of you, no matter if you commit theft, murder, or corruption. You are just like any other pious and devoted son to me. Simply, the most reasonable opinion about the father is that he is just like a devil who urges his sons to do evil deeds. He said, but why does God keep reminding us in the Quran about the blessings he granted us with, when those blessings are merely nothing compared to what he owns? What is unique in this case? I replied, God reminds us of the blessings he bestows on us to protect us from ourselves, we may show gratitude and thank someone else other than him. If we don't worship him, we would worship someone else. When I gain fortune or feel the euphoria of success and feel proud of my breakthroughs, I thank my own self unintentionally. It is as if I attribute my achievements to my own abilities which are already given to me by God. At that very moment, I would open the Quran to read the verse which says, And my success is not but through God at Quran 11, 88, so that it opens my eyes and I thank God.
Shuei B said to his people, O oh my people, tell me what will be your position if I am on clear proof and insight from my Lord, and he has given me lawful provision from him, as well as prophethood. I do not wish to prohibit you from something and go against you and do it myself. I only wish to set your matter right, to the best of my ability, by inviting you to declare the oneness of your Lord and to obey him. My success in achieving this is only with Allah, may he be glorified. I place my trust in him alone and turn to him in all my affairs. HUD 88 I added, if someone gave you a gift, would you feel happy for the gift itself or for its indication of that person's love to you? The greatness of the gift is derived from its source giver. If I gave you 100 dinar and the king gave you 1 dinar, you would be happier for the 1 dinar that the king gave to you more than the 100 dinars I gave you. And you would spread the news over social media. The Japanese man listened without interfering throughout the three hours. The American man then asked again, isn't it considered harshness when God, Allah, accounts us for things he initially wrote for us? I said, I will give you an example. Let's say that you want to buy something from the store and decide to send your first son specifically to buy that thing. It is because you previously know that your first son is wise. He will straight away go and purchase what you exactly want while you know that your other son will get busy playing with his friends and the money may be lost. This is an assumption which you built your judgments on. I continued, predestination does not contradict with freedom of choice as God predestines us based on his complete knowledge of what our preferences and intentions will be. Our deeds are foreknown to God in his record, but they are not preordained for us against our will. They are only preordained in his prescience. In the same way, we may foresee in light of our children's character's knowledge, they will make a wrong choice before they make it. We did not impose their choice upon them against their will, even though we may have expected that choice. God preordains the intentions and hearts of man, if these are evil, man will come to evil, if good, good will be his fate. I also told him, man, in his freedom, may act contrary to what satisfies God, but he cannot do anything in contradiction to his will. God granted us the freedom to transgress against his wishes, we disobey him, but he gave no one the freedom to transcend his will. He said, so why does God permit transgression of his orders? I said to him, sometimes my child, for example, insists on touching the fire and I say don't touch it, but at a certain point, when I find him stubborn, I let him touch it to learn from his experience. I know from my son's personality that he won't learn unless he tries. God is the all-knowing. He knows the nature of his creation and that they won't learn unless they try. So, we find that some people face simple afflictions from God and some face difficult ones. This could be because that person won't return to God without trials and affliction. This is all based on the knowledge of God. He said, why does God compel us to believe? I replied, has God forced you to believe in him? Here you are standing before me claiming that you don't believe in him. Our experience further affirms the freedom that it is impossible under any pressure to compel the heart to accept anything it does not want to. We can force anyone through threats and force them to stay with us, but no pressure whatsoever can make them love us. God has safeguarded our hearts from all forms of compulsion and duress. Therefore, God judges according to the heart and rewards according to intention, which is visible to no one but him. There was a surprise at the end of the visit, the American man asked me to take pictures inside the mosque. Meanwhile, the Japanese man came to me and said, I like this religion, what a great religion it is. I want to embrace this religion. It was a fantastic surprise because he never had any reaction towards the previous conversation. He was just listening during the whole visit. The Japanese testified in front of the American there is no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. The American congratulated him, and the Japanese asked me more details about practicing this religion. I gave him the Islamic Center's phone number in Tokyo, and he promised me that he will continue this path. God will bring forth a people he will love and who will love him. Those angels who carry the throne and those around it exalt Allah with praise of their Lord and believe in him and ask forgiveness for those who have believed, saying, Our Lord. You have encompassed all things in mercy and knowledge, so forgive those who have repented and followed your way and protect them from the punishment of hellfire. Quran 47. The angels who carry the throne of your Lord, O Messenger, and those who are around it, declare the transcendence of their Lord from that which is not proper for him, they believe in him.
and seek forgiveness for those who have faith in Allah, saying in their supplication. Our Lord, your knowledge and mercy encompass everything, so forgive those who repent from their sins and follow your religion and protect them from being touched by the fire. Garfia, 7. God's love and mercy for his servants manifests in creating them, honoring them and guiding them to the right path. And we have certainly established you upon the earth and made for you therein ways of livelihood. Little are you grateful. And we have certainly created you, O mankind, and given you a human form. Then we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam, so, they prostrated, except for Iblis, the devil. He was not of those who prostrated. Quran 7 10, 11. Allah certainly established you, O children of Adam, on the earth, and gave you the means of making a living. You should be thankful to Allah for that, but you give little thanks. O people, Allah created your father Adam, making him in the best of forms and the best of designs. Then he commanded the angels to bow down to him, honoring him, so they did so, all bowing down, except for Iblis, the Satan, who refused to bow down out of pride and stubbornness. Al-Aif, 10-11 one of the most delicate gestures in the Quran is God mentioning his love to his servants before mentioning the servants' love to him. That's out of his great subtlety vast mercy to them. God will bring forth in place of them a people he will love and who will love him. Quran 5:54. O you who believe in Allah and follow his messenger, if any one of you turns back from their religion to disbelief, then Allah will soon replace them with a people whom he will love and who will love him due to their steadfastness. They will be compassionate towards the believers and harsh towards the disbelievers. They will strive with their wealth and their lives so that Allah's word is victorious. They will not fear the one who blames them, because their concern will be Allah's pleasure and blame rather than that of created things. That is Allah's grace which he gives to whomever of his servants he wishes. Allah's grace and kindness is wide and he knows who is deserving of the same and who is not. Almighty, 54 also, one of the subtle gestures in the Noble Quran is that God's mercy manifests even in the human's afflictions of tests and trials. Should I take other gods apart from him, who would neither be able to intercede for me nor save me if the Most Gracious brings me harm? Quran 36, 23 Shall I take other deities to be wrongly worshipped instead of Allah who created me? If the Merciful intends harm for me, the intercession of these other deities will not avail me at all. Nor will they be able to save me from the harm that Allah intended for me if I die as a disbeliever. Yasin, 23. If the Most Gracious desires harm for a person, then this necessarily leads to the mercy and kindness of God. So, in this case, what seemed to be harmful, in fact, turns out to be merciful and good for the believer because the Most Gracious does not emanate from him except mercy, kindness. But perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you, and perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And God knows, while you know not. Quran 2, 216. Fighting in Allah's path has been chosen for believers even though it is something that is naturally disliked, because it means risking one's life and wealth. However, you may dislike something when it is good and beneficial. An example of this is striving in Allah's path, which means, in addition to the great reward, the defeat of the enemy and promotion of Allah's word. On the other hand, you may like something whilst it is bad and harmful to you, such as holding back from fighting, this will result in you being defeated and the enemies gaining authority over you. Allah knows full well what is good and what is not, whereas you do not. Therefore, follow his instruction which is better for you. Al-Baqarah 216 By the mercy of God, he distributed the livelihoods among human beings and made them the needs that one of them decides for the other to achieve cooperation among them in a way that benefits everyone. If each of them dispensed with one another, their interests would be disrupted. By his mercy, he made the rich and poor among them, the honored and servile, the helpless and capable. Also, he kept the divine door giving and virtue open to compete in it and forever be attached to it. Do they distribute the mercy of your Lord? It is we who have apportioned among them their livelihood in the life of this world and have raised some of them above others in degrees of rank, that they may make use of one another for service. But the mercy of your Lord is better than whatever they accumulate. Quran 43, 32. O Messenger! Do they distribute the mercy of your Lord, that they can give it to and prevent from it whomsoever they wish? It is I who distributed their provisions between them in the world making some of them rich and some poor, so that they are subservient to each other. 
The mercy of your Lord to his servants in the afterlife is better than the temporary, mortal things of the world that these people hoard. Aza Zukruf, 32. God's mercy also manifests in his Sharia laws and commandments, which are mere goodness and compassion to the creations regarding the providence of guidance and their religion's preservation. Also, regarding the protection of themselves, their bodies, their minds and thoughts, their honors and kinship, their offspring, and the conservation of their money and properties. All laws and rules related to those previously mentioned five essentials were merely sent as a mercy to people to safeguard and protect them from corruption and aggression. Along with breaking the ice between people. Also, to keep them away from hardships and difficulties and to preserve everyone's rights to be able to live in a healthy, secure and happy society environment. As the right of having a healthy society is one of the life rights pillars. And when he goes away, he strives throughout the land to cause corruption therein and destroy crops and animals. And God does not like corruption. Quran 2, 205 When this hypocrite leaves you, he works hard to cause corruption by committing sins and he destroys crops and kills animals. Allah does not love corruption in the land and he does not love those that cause corruption. Al-Baqarah 205 Ibn al-Qayyim said mentioning it only out of taking parable and moral from it, colon, God inspired David peace be upon him saying, O David, if only the people who go astray from me know how much I wait for them to come back towards me, how kind I am to them, and how I long to them to give up their sins. If they just know about that all, they would die out of their love to me. O David, if this is the case of my will for those who go away from me, what about for those who come towards me?